Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I will be talking about anti-lag systems. Uh, this is a, a video that has been requested quite a bit, so I hope you guys uh, learn something from this. And more specifically, I'm going to be talking about anti-lag system using an ignition timing delay. Now there are multiple ways of uh, incorporating an anti-lag system into an engine. Uh, this is one of them and I will have another video next week with a different system which uses bypass valves. So, for this system, this uh, ignition timing delay anti-lag system, I'm just going to go through the four strokes and explain how things work. Uh, one thing before I get started with that is if you have not watched my video on turbochargers, that's pretty much essential before you watch this. And if you have not watched my video on turbo lag, also something you would definitely need to watch before watching this uh, to understand why this system needs to exist uh, for some applications. So once again, turbo and uh, turbo lag, uh, and I can post annotations so you can click those. All right, so let's just go through the four strokes. Uh, so we've got our intake, and this is when, all right, so you're driving, you let off the gas because you're coming into a corner. Well, you don't want to lose your boost, uh, which typically happens when you let off your gas, uh, because you're no longer producing much exhaust, so your turbine slows down. When your turbine slows down, you don't have any boost, and you need to rebuild that boost, and then you have that turbo lag uh, once your foot is back on the gas. So when you let off the gas, it's not going to close off the uh, air entirely to the engine. Uh, and when I say entirely, I mean it'll let more air flow in than typically at idle. So you're going to have that air and fuel coming in for your intake. Typical intake, stroke, goes down. Then you've got your compression. You compress your air-fuel mixture all the way up to the top. Now normally when you hit around top dead center is when you're going to have your ignition, but your ECU is going to say, hey, no, we're not going to do that, we're going to wait. And so your piston's going to come down quite a bit before igniting, and then it's going to send the spark. Now, it's going to send the spark at the exact moment where it knows that your engine can still keep running, but it's still as late as possible. So basically you're not producing hardly any power, um, you're just producing enough power to keep your engine running and with, with that timing delay. However, what that enables is during your exhaust stroke, so you're going to have your power stroke, you're going to have that timing delayed of the, of the combustion. So by the time it reaches the bottom of the cylinder, you still have combustion occurring. So during the exhaust stroke, when it's pushing that air, that exhaust out, it's actually still going to be burning. So what it's going to do is force that exhaust that exhaust is going to be high pressure, high temperature, uh, because it's still burning. And that high pressure, high temperature turns into high speed air uh, flowing through your turbine. And so you're going to keep your turbine spinning, and so you're going to keep pulling in air. And so you never will lose boost, and that is the great thing about it. The problem is, well, I, I guess I'll just go through all of these. So the, the benefit of an anti-lag system, well, it's in the name. Uh, you do not lose, uh, tur you don't experience turbo lag. Um, and you may still have a little bit, it may not be uh, just like normal, but it, it definitely it definitely helps. So that's, that's the goal of it and that's what it does. Also you have a loud fire spitting car, um, which is more exciting. So another, another pro. Uh, cons, increased turbo temperature. So because you've got these hot gases, this high pressure, high temperature air going into the turbocharger, you're going to have an increased turbocharger temperature, which you do not want. Things fail when they get hot. Also, you've got increased pressure inside of your exhaust manifold and in your turbocharger, so that means more stresses in both um, more likely to fail. If you were to do something like this in a typical car, it would not last very long. It's, they're, not, they're not made. Exhaust manifolds are not meant for combustion to occur within them or the kinds of high pressures that you would experience using an ALS system. So, one more thing is, which isn't really that big of a deal, but you would have reduced engine braking. So if you like engine braking, just leaving uh, your car uh, and letting the gear, the, the gearing, the, all the drivetrain do the braking for you rather than actually pressing the brake pedal, with an anti-lag system that's not going to be as effective because you've got the engine basically running um, and, and so it's not going to have as much uh, exhaust um, resistance that it typically would uh, without the ALS. So, the big benefit is you do get that uh, added pressure in the exhaust phase and it keeps the turbine spooled up so that when you get back into gear and back on the throttle, 
you do not have a loss of boost. 